As a major research institution, Arizona State University offers the most online bachelor's degree programs, along with world-class faculty and dedicated support. Discover why ASU is ranked number one in innovation for eight consecutive years. Tap to learn more. Okay, no, no. Jacking off is pretty much gay because you are you have your hand on a man's dick, so you can't... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's never been a problem for me on the other okay. end of the spectrum. Well, what, what, if I, what if I'm doing that and I'm not attracted to myself? Then it's fine, right? Ooh. It's still gay. It's just a hate fuck. What if I fight myself as hard as I can? <laughs> <laughs> what if my wife is having gay thoughts? You're just describing hotter and hotter sex. Thank, <laughs> so, thank you. So that's it. all that's happening there. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Fantastic. Excellent. And we also have two brand new first-time guest masochists, Kat and T from the Bible Breakdown podcast. Kat, T, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. I don't know what masochist is, but uh, I'll take it. <laughs> it's someone who likes being hurt. Oh, it's like I'm a glutton for punishment. That's exactly. being a masochist, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the M and S and M. That's it. Not a lot of people know uh, that. So yeah. thanks for bringing them. Yes, now we all know. That's the, <laughs> that's the M. So, Kat, tell us, what horrible M type of movie are we going to be breaking down today? Thank you for asking, Heath. Today, we will be breaking down the 2009 Daniel L. Ross film, He Who Finds a Wife. It's a story about a Black man named Ansel who thinks he loves his fiance, <laughs> Lauren, until his new co-worker, Brie the Stallion, who apparently needs this job because she has outgrown all of her clothes, offers up extra temptation during a sudden bout of abstinence before their wedding. That's all accurate. That's, That's all true. things yeah. that happen in this movie. That is the movie. Yeah. yeah. Believe it or not. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the thinly veiled morality plays of Tyler Perry, but... Big Mama's House 3 was a bit too subtle and well acted for you. You <laughs> will love this movie. All right. And is there anything y'all would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Um, I, Can I go first? Oh, please. Cat, please. <laughs> okay. Yes. I want to nominate this for best worst sex scene. <laughs> Ooh, for sure. You don't? I mean, and it's really easy because most Christian movies don't even have sex scenes. So they were really, you know, very bold to even have one, but it was terrible. Yes. Yeah, so it's a very shoulder centric sex scene. Let's look at it. Oh, I can't yeah. wait to talk about the sex scene because how dumb is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. It was very shoulder heavy indeed. I, <laughs> I didn't realize at the time, but. Yeah, and elbows. A whole lot of that. Yeah. A lot of elbow, a lot of shoulder. A lot of that. Okay. So for best worst, I was going to go with. Best worst, failed, meet cute. Yes. No, I don't think the movie, somebody in the movie heard like, oh, you're supposed to do this thing called a meet cute where the two of the characters meet. But A, it's not the two protagonist oh. characters. It's not the main couple that do that. And they do the opposite of a meet. They do like a meet gross and then are still <laughs> attracted to each other for no reason later. I honestly don't know what this guy had on any of the women. Like, I don't know why they were attracted to him. I also was confused by that. Thank you, T. He's horrible. Thank yeah. you. He was the worst. I think I wrote down some of T's quotes while we, we watched this together. And I'm going to replace one of the words he says. You can try to guess what it is. He said, why do they like this ninja? Like, they really <laughs> couldn't, like, yeah, like, you were very, like, frustrated and befuddled. I just, I didn't understand. Like, you know, usually a, a star character or main character has, you know, charisma or something, you know, a la James Gandolfini as Tony Soprano or something like that. But I just didn't get it. I don't, he, yep. I never was on board with them at all. Yeah. Ansel does not make sense. Solid, solid objection. And I, I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst cell phone rings. 
<laughs> oh God! The, everyone they will are have so loud. aggressive in this. Aggre- and they will be different in every scene. I haven't heard any of them since before the towers fell. It was a very conflicting set of emotions. You know what it is? It was the audio was so terrible that the phones would be so loud and clear. It's like, what the hell is that in the room with me right now? <laughs> exactly. Where everything yes. else was just it's like, am I suddenly back in two thousand three? I'm scared. <laughs> See, they need your mixing board. Exactly. 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 No, but I wanted to say, I called Ansel great value Tyrese. Yes. He was very smooth. Mm -hmm. Kirkland Brandt. Kirkland Brandt. He just seemed hairless. Like, yeah. I do have a best worst on my end, too. It's um, best worst Tony Braxton impersonation theme song for their entire movie. <laughs> oh, definitely. 100% yes. It was like the opening bars for Unbreak My Heart and then wasn't. Yes. It was <laughs> very, oh, it's like a stifled sneeze. It was like too drunk for karaoke, Tony Braxton. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. I think we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back to tell you all about He Who Finds a Wife. All right, everybody. Welcome to the first writer's room meeting for He Who Finds a Wife. All right. Now, we want to create something that really strikes at the heart of infidelity. But we want to talk about the church. And the relationships we have with our parents. Of course. Of course. All those things are important. And it's also important that we really... Look, if you're not going to let me nut, I am going to cheat on Um, you. Sorry, Greg, uh, what? I just think it's important that all the ladies out there know that when the nutometer is full, I need to release. And how I do it is not my fault. You know what I'm saying? Men, women, the nutometer needs to be lowered. Please stop saying nutometer. That'd be great. It's like I always tell my friends, I'm a fuck machine. And if I don't run on the regular, I get rust in my gears. And that is unacceptable. More unacceptable than cheating. Way more. So you guys read all the stuff you were just talking about, and then I'll sprinkle my stuff about the nutometer throughout the movie. So if you'll excuse me, <laughs> I think the unisex bathroom is calling my name. Can can we get the maintenance staff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To... I'm gonna call him right now. Got it. Okay, thank God. Dude, you you have to stop. No can do, baby. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, no, what are you doing here? I thought you were on vacation. Well, I, I am technically, but the venue for our Las Vegas show just confirmed, so we're dropping it in kind of last minute. We're doing a Las Vegas live show? You know it, baby. God Awful Movies live in Sin City, October 28th. It's going to be so good, it's <sighs> spooky. Okay, is he going to do Elvis like the whole time? I, 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 hopefully he's done by the time we get there. Yeah. Okay. Um, Eli? Elvis, please. Absolutely. Not going to call you that. Eli, do we have platinum and VIP tickets? I'll answer. We sure do. VIP tickets guarantee you a seat in the first few rows, plus a meet and greet with us after the show. And platinum tickets get you a special Friday night of food, games, and hanging out with the cast, plus a whole heaping hunk of burning merch. Right. Yeah, but those almost always sell out before our show even airs. So, you know, apologies if that's the case. Okay, so where do people get tickets? Godawfulmovieslive.com, baby. But once again, act fast because our shows have been selling out. Faster than greased lightning. Godawfulmovieslive.com. It's going to be hilarious. He's just got to work it out of his system by the time we do the show, right? He'll be done by then. I, well, I, if he doesn't, we can just leave him there. Okay. And then from there, I standing box jump into the squat position. I see. Very impressive. Hey, what y'all doing? Oh, hey, Heath. I was just showing Cat and T my perfect workout system. I call it starting CrossFit Strength 40 20, 10, Sanity. It works every muscle in the body so hard, it might literally kill you. It certainly looks like it'll kill you. Yeah, Eli, if you're looking to get into better shape, you don't need some gimmick program. You just need FitBod. What's FitBod? It's my favorite fitness app. Whatever your fitness level and goals might be, FitBod builds a dynamic workout plan just for you. And they optimize future workouts based on your personal progress. So I'm not stuck with a workout program that's too hard or could injure me? Exactly. FitBod's powerful technology understands your strength training ability 
studies your past workouts, and adapts to your available equipment. Plus, you can learn new movements the right way with over 1,400 exercise demonstration videos. Wow, that's a lot of exercises. Indeed it is. In fact, I started using FitBod when they became a sponsor. I love how they adapt the workout to how I'm feeling and what I have available at home. That's why I, Heath Enright, personally endorse FitBod. All right, guys, I'm in. Where do we sign up? Wherever you are in your fitness journey, get the most out of every workout with FitBod. Get 25% off your subscription at fitbod.me slash gam. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash G-A-M. All right. Well, I guess you guys don't want to watch me box jump into a squat after all, huh? Oh, no. We still definitely want to see that. I also want to see that. Yes. I'm going to get my phone. And we're back. And we're going to start with a cut scene from a a video game on like a floppy disk in a Commodore 64, <laughs> something like that. And we get the logo for Maverick Entertainment. Yes, a logo that says, I don't have five whole dollars to hire someone on Fiverr to make our movie logo. I'll no. do it myself. And uh, we get a little bit of music while we see a married couple in bed and one of them kind of wakes up in the middle of the night. And it was like, it was clearly the music of like, oh my God, I hate your stupid face and you snore and it's been, I mm, <laughs> hate this. I can't sleep ever. Yeah, my music note here was Apple Loops wants us to know that this is a very serious movie. Sure. <laughs> and we get a little bit of VO from our narrator here. This is Lauren She's going through flashbacks in her head of things that have happened to her recently. Uh -huh. And one of them is there's going to be a sex timeout between her and her fiance until after the wedding. Which, what was that supposed to do? Yes, thank you. That was my question. If you've is been doing it all this time and then now that you're going to like wet, like marriage counseling, it's like, oh, well, we don't want to piss God off. Does God have like a short-term memory loss problem where yeah. he only notices if you fucked within the most recent 48 hours before your wedding? Or of course, it's like a whole thing too of like where people do like recommitment ceremonies where they're like re-virginalized and stuff like that because the biggest sin in the world is having sex like with someone for enjoyment. Of course. There's a ritual for re-virginalizing? Is that a real yeah, thing? Yeah, like there's people who like yes. um, when they get back into church and stuff like that, they kind of like take a celibacy and they're like, no, I'm just abstaining until marriage. So it's like a second virginity. Okay. That's a weird magic spell they have. Yeah. And it works great as we see in the movie. <laughs> yeah, sure you does. can see it. It goes well for everybody. <laughs> so mm -hmm. with that vital information conveyed, we watch a guy. This is Ansel. He's one of the two main characters. We talked about him a little in the intro. And this is the meat cute. This is uh, Heath's best word. <laughs> he bumps into a lady because he isn't looking and he immediately blames her for him not looking where he's going. Right. And she very correctly identifies that he was at fault here. She's like, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry because, you know, social contract makes me say sorry here. You did a crazy hip check motion for no reason. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm sorry I didn't leave you any room for your hip check motion that was insane just now. And that's how they meet cute, according to the movie. I think. Yeah, I didn't realize you were going to do a surprise samba. That's on me. I also feel like we're leaving out like how horrible the sound quality is. Ooh, um, yes. We had to turn Rough. on the subtitles yeah. <laughs> for, at a certain point because it was just brutal. Yeah, it's really bad. I wish the subtitles could have taken over for the cell phone rings that we're going to hear <laughs> instead of actually giving them to us. Oh my just God. all caps taking up the entire screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So with that neat cute out of the way, we're going to cut over to Ansel's office where his girlfriend, Lauren, the other main character, is surprising him at work. So when you say office, <laughs> are, you, <laughs> are you talking about a room or are you just talking about an area with a desk? Yeah, it does hit a lot more closer to area with desk. But that does not stop Lauren from immediately sitting on his lap and open mouth kissing him. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know what I really think happened here? I think they were planning on in post cropping it because it could look like a standalone office if you couldn't see the top of the cubicle. Because I've done yeah, this before right, where we're right. like, oh, we'll fix it in post because there are some scenes where it does look like an office. I think they just forgot. 
Yeah, but they keep accidentally panning over to show us that this is an open office, which makes the fact that they are open mouth kissing and she's like gently stroking around his nipples even more (laughs) horrifying. (laughs) At one point in this scene, the boss walks in and he's like, oh, hey, are you um, raw dog fucking someone in your cubicle right now? Just right next to the copier. It seemed like Ansel was actually delusional and believed he had a fully closed office, but he did not. And the rest of the universe around him just keeps showing up. And he's like, yeah. how do you keep getting past the secretary that I have that I don't have and the door that I have that I don't have? Yeah. Well, he's obviously a very important... Did you get his job title? Yeah, it's Director of Central Affairs. Right? <laughs> and, so and that's movie, very important. The movie's about affairs. So he's got a couch in his office. That's very important. He has an overly comfortable couch in his office, right? <laughs> I agree. Like if you're yeah. in a, offices have to have like it has to be like squared away and it's like good posture, not like I sink into it and I want to watch Netflix type of couch, right? He, yeah. His is too comfortable. Yeah. If your office is not for having sex with porn stars, pretending to be getting into casting for <laughs> porn stars, you should not have this couch in it. I don't it. think so either. Okay, that is an irresponsible, unprofessional casting couch is what I'm saying, though. Like, it's not, <laughs> exactly. It, it wouldn't even be good for that because you can't get good positions if it's not firm in the right spots. I'm just saying, all around, weird choice for... Unprofessional. For unprofessional couch yes, choice. Yes, at the very least. And then one other thing happens in this scene, which is, of course, that Mr. Turner, the boss, introduces Bree to Ansel. Bree's the one who he was just super rude to outside. He's like, hey, Ansel, so this is Bree. Don't have sex with her. She's a farmer's daughter. (laughs) And I'm out. He just walks out. (laughs) Yep. He literally, the actor literally said, I wrote in my notes, there is no joke I could write that is funnier than the actor going, I'm out, and then leaving the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. <laughs> yep. That was pretty great. So now we're going to watch Ansel and Lauren pull up to church for their first marriage counseling appointment. Is this a thing? Do people go to church and do church marriage counseling right before their wedding? Eli, you are adorable. Yes, this is a huge thing. I did it like you're strongly encouraged to do it. I'm pretty sure sometimes it costs money. And actually, a lot of times they have courses you do. Like, does it watch Righteous Gemstones? Ooh. And like the oldest son's wife, she does like a little, she has a little side hustle where she does marriage counseling stuff, packets and games for people. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's a whole industry. So, yeah. And actually, because you got to sign up for the course, because they have it where you sit down with the pastor. In real life, you don't really sit down with the pastor. He doesn't have time for that. <laughs> No. Wait, you do it with a TA instead of the actual pastor? (laughs) You would be so lucky. I wish it was someone with the expertise of a TA. Like, it's just (laughs) some guy. Like, you at least have to go to school to be a TA. This could just be any person. And they're usually just encouraging you to just stay in whatever situation you're in because divorce makes baby Jesus cry. Great. Right, exactly. And weddings make their venue quite a bit of money. Yeah. So in comes the pastor. It's time for marriage counseling. And he is three feet tall. Let's just say it. He is he is a <laughs> toddler. He and my child. He's a short American. Yeah. He and my child are the same height. And then they have a fight about the genders of their children. This was weird. And the order? Yes, the order. Yeah. So so the pastor just comes in and he's like, so, you know, tell me about your future plans. And immediately... Ansel's like, fuck you. That's way too vague, which was like a weird start. (laughs) Strangely aggressive beginning to this discussion. (laughs) And then he's like, well, my, okay, fine. I'll tell you about my plan to have a son and then a daughter. And Lauren's like, well, or, you know, a daughter and then a son. And they argue back and forth for a second. And finally the pastor's like, hey, so you can't control that. So that's a, a silly argument to have. We need to talk about Jewish ghost laws because this is scary. Yes. <laughs> so they, they get down to business with that. It really matters for your marriage. And it feels like she makes up the we're not having sex rule like on the spot as an excuse, right? He's like, so how about premarital sex? And she's like, yes, we are. 
stopping fucking now. Right, because right. <laughs> Ansel's like, love premarital sex. And she's like, yeah, ah, so like, funny. He's hilarious. No, but we are stopping no. as of we earlier. Yeah, we like fucked on the, in the car on the way here, but we're not. That's the last one for now. <laughs> she's immediately slut shamed by the like marriage counseling immediately, where it's just like, okay, yeah, I don't want to be seen as, you know, one of these couples who are just shacking up. I want to be seen as a respectable like Christian woman. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to pretend like I'm doing this stuff. Yeah, exactly. And I love this. To transition out of that, the pastor literally says, okay, well, I'm done talking about that. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then harasses them about not coming to church often enough. I just love the idea that the, the author of this movie was like, how does this, pa oh, I'm done talking about that. There we go. Perfect. It's a perfect way to segue. Strange. We get a little bit of like really poisonous Christian messages here too. Lauren explains like, no, we do monogamy. That's a rule for me. And then the pastor jumps in and he's like, hey, 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 cheating actually is not a deal breaker. You're a woman. You kind of have to not, there's no divorce. That's not a deal breaker. It's just your job to be so attractive that that doesn't happen or else it's your fault. Right, exactly. The ball's the in your court on that one. Yeah. yeah. So don't be, you know, getting all unattractive or getting all mouthy <laughs> right. and turning him off and sending him into the arms of another woman because that's really... Because I it, I think since I've, I've done the premarital counseling in like a lot of mainstream like black church, well, not in a lot of them, but in a mainstream black church and it... It, they're giving you this advice they've never taken. Like to me, when I notice people who've been in like long-term committed relationships, like this isn't the advice they follow. Like unless they just want to be miserable. It just seems like it's about domination and making sure everyone's genitals are in the right place. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Terrible. And of course, Ansel's like, well, I think the pastor's right. He's a man of God. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the pastor just smiles and nods. And he's like, yeah, that's that's all correct. What you just said, I'm yep. a man of God. Makes a ton of sense. It's uh, your lady job to be attractive all the time. Yes. Or else it's your fault. So with them all well therapized, we're going to meet the star of the movie. Nay, the star of my heart. I'm talking, of course, Misty. about Lauren's friend, Misty. Oh, she was Misty's fantastic. And we will meet her roasting carpets with Lauren at the carpet store. <laughs> and Misty's very first action in this movie is to like point and laugh at some lady who still has rollers in her hair. There it is. Rollers. Good job. Rollers. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was very, once again, like this is very true to what it's like hanging out with like what I would consider like decent Christian women. Like there's so much gossip and like tearing each other down. That's kind of one of the reasons I got out of it. Mm. And it's like, this woman's obviously struggling. She's there with her kids and her, like this woman needs help and you're just going to talk about her. And this is just like a, a black lady insight because church culture is so much about hair. You'll notice like all the women in the movie like have straight hair. It takes so much time and money for black women to have straight hair that that could be its own side movie. Interesting. I knew I was missing something. I wrote in my notes, is it wrong to come out with curlers in your hair? Like morally? Yes. Oh, <laughs> Apparently, there we go. Eli, you haven't heard of like the bonnet controversy. Does this make it over to like white Twitter? The, bo the bonnet, bonnet controversy? I have not heard I of that. I can't tell you how far I am from the part of the <laughs> internet that knows about the bonnet controversy, cat. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited to tell you about it. Okay, so... You know, black women, we wear something known as like a silk bonnet at night. And it kind of looks like the Chef Boyardee cap, but satin and like saggy. And so sometimes women just leave the house with it still on. Just like basically I woke up like this. And it's seen as sort of a sign of you're not together. You're not neat. You're not tidy. Mm. Oh, and there's like a whole judgy thing going on about whether or oh, not that's allowed. Yes, like it's okay. very polarizing because I'm I'm on the side of the fence of like, look, I mean, she managed to get a shirt on. Good job. Yeah, wear whatever you want. Exactly. Yeah, like I'm not. Once again, I don't like the bite. You know, because a lot of times if people look away, they might be going through something. You don't have to necessarily immediately go into like you're bad, you're not dressed well. Sure. Okay. I don't have a problem with it. I think people should leave the house with it or without it or whatever. Like, it's not my decision. You know, like, it's nothing to, I feel like, judge people on. 
I think we've just been, you know, conditioned here in the States to kind of dress down all the time. So, I mean, I don't have, I personally don't have a problem with it, but, uh, you know, I know people who feel like, oh, you should dress to impress when you go out or dress the way you want to be treated when you go out. Um, I don't know, man. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Now, I will say you'll get better medical care and treatment if you don't go out like that. Like it is a better way, you know, like if you want to be treated better in life, but I personally won't judge you for it. But like, yeah, you're going to catch some heat. Okay, sure. So then let me ask you both. I have a pair of Crocs that I wear with white socks and those Crocs have a photograph of my pug on them. Can can everybody jump in and say no right away, please? Do you think gave that you those are a great idea? God damn it. <laughs> I mean, once again, I've been like, is everything okay? Thank you. <laughs> no. That would be my first impulse. I actually love Crocs. They're so comfortable, but I have to antagonize Eli all the time, just in character. It's just requirement. So I feel like, wait, Eli, how old are you? I would not wear Crocs. I refuse to wear Crocs. <laughs> All right, T, you're getting you're getting some scathing atheist Crocs. They're coming to you. Oh boy, I'm, I'm getting your address from Cat, and you're getting a set of scathing atheist. Somebody's we don't standing even behind you right now with Crocs. We're right behind you. <laughs> Look on your feet. That's me down there. Oh my God. It astonishes me how Crocs have grown because when I was in junior high and high school, like we used to like look at those, like what the hell are these? And uh, yeah, people wear them. I've heard there. I've heard really good things, but I just can't do it. I can't. Crocs used to be a shoe for I have to shower at the hospital. And That's now what they I was going to say. Like I tell my daughter all the time, like all the kids in her school dress like they just got out of rehab. <laughs> Like every single one of them, I'm like, I go, I'm, all they need are cigarettes. And that's exactly <laughs> what the outside of rehab looks like. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> so they make fun of some carpets for a little while. Misty almost fights a lady with rollers in her hair. All of this is so that Lauren can run into her ex, Jeff. Oh my and God. she sees him <laughs> and he sees her and she immediately flees. So uh, yeah. we we catch up to Lauren being chased through the parking lot by her ex, Jeff. Hey, um, guys, bring it in. If a woman starts sprinting away from you, you got to not follow. No got to not what. follow. Got to not follow. Don't just recklessly pursue no matter what. None of that. <laughs> Unless you have an EpiPen. Like, I'm pretty sure she tripped on purpose so that I could catch up to her. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is another example of why I don't understand. Lauren knows how to pick them because Jeff is not a fucking catcher either. I mean, mm -mm. come on. <laughs> no. And which is no. crazy because the women in this film were beautiful. They were. For sure. Like, they were really stunning. And like, the because I feel like Lauren, she looks like Sierra's cousin. Absolutely. Like, she has like perfect bone structure and the siren Brie like she kind of <laughs> like I caught her Brie the stallion, Brie the stallion but there are yeah. some some similarities there she was the precursor so like <laughs> yeah but the guys are just like I said he looks uh Jeff looks like a Kirkland brand Neil Winters from Young and the Restless yes you know who Jeff reminds me of Red from Friday Really? Ooh. I mean, with the bruises, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. That, the bruise was what I was going to go with for sure. <laughs> uh, Jeff, by the way, will have giant unacknowledged <laughs> bruises all over his face throughout this movie. <laughs> And will never, like, have been in a fight. I just imagine this guy gets his ass kicked all the time and showed up to set and was like, hey, everybody, ready to shoot the movie? And they were like, God damn it, Jeff. No, Eli, <laughs> this is what happened. So, like, when this when this is happening in the parking lot, he's there with his girlfriend and just abandons her to run after Lauren. And she goes in the parking lot. And, like, I was like, Jeff's pimp hand is strong because he tells her, wait there, I'm handling this. Yeah. And he's just talking to Lauren while his, I keep calling her the white girl, because she didn't have a name. But like Jeff's white girl was like, I just said she got her lick back. And that's why he has that big <laughs> knot. That, that was for leaving me in the parking lot. Yeah, exactly. That's what the bruise is from. White girl walks out there and he's just like, hi, honey. Yeah, I started chasing this woman and now we're talking. Just give me a second. <laughs> just be cool. Everybody except Misty in this universe does nothing about that. Everybody needs to ask so many more questions about the guy chasing a lady into a parking lot or anywhere. Misty is the only one who's like, I'm going to choke this guy out, right? Like we choke him out. I'm gonna <laughs> yes. Do. And then Misty 
waits in the car for this scene. She's like, okay, I'll be in the car. And so th this is a very long scene where he's like, I miss you. And she's like, you cheated on me. It turned out you were married, blah, blah, blah. And the entire time the scene was going on, I was like, Misty is dying in the car like a poorly watched baby right now. <laughs> At least turn it on and give the girl some AC. Crack the window. Yeah. Crack a window for Misty. Come on. Okay, one other moment that has to be mentioned is the best worst slap of all time in this scene. Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, what was that even for? Right, so Jeff, <laughs> Jeff is like, I still love you, and tries to give his speech about, like, I want you back to Lauren. He cheated on her and left her, so obviously she's like, no, go fuck yourself. And she does a slap, and okay, it was such a sad, way too light slap that I'm certain she hit him pretty hard on the previous take. And he was like, God, what the fuck? <laughs> and so like, this was like, all right, I'm not going to hurt you. Fine. We'll take it again. So now, now I have a counter theory. And Kat, I hate to argue with your theory because I think it's a solid one. What if that bruise is from the first take with the original <laughs> slap? Okay. That's not out of the question. That's so much funnier. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day. She's visiting her client, Ronnie. Oh, God. Don't worry, this scene will never matter, but it will be oddly homophobic, so we are going to talk about it. It turns out that Lauren is a publicist for Ronnie, who's a rapper, but he keeps getting caught being gay. What? <laughs> no, he got caught at a party. I know. I thought he got caught with a picture. Wasn't there like a picture? Because I, I wrote down in my notes, like, gay rapper Eddie Murphy. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Right. It was it was both. It was that and there was a picture of him with a drag queen. So everybody was being bigots about that, too, I think. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She actually <laughs> Lauren actually reads like a headline from some paper about this. And it says hardcore rapper by day, homo thug by night was the exact <laughs> word. <laughs> homo thug by night. And I was like, that's a really good like premise for a superhero movie but yes. not as like a negative headline now you're horrible bigots for portraying it that way okay movie i'm sure it'll be in the new york times opinion section any day now <laughs> <laughs> yeah so now we're going to cut over to ansel's office and he and brie are you gotta stop saying office man yes <laughs> ansel's <laughs> yeah, corner you're really misrepresenting like this even space even cubicle is generous it's i don't not... think realtors would allow you to list this as an office <laughs> <laughs> Ansel's area. Okay. There you go. Okay. Sorry to be like that. Oh, no, no, no. It's important. <laughs> the truth in advertising. He and Brie are putting covers on TPS reports or whatever, but sure. it's just so that they can flirt some more. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, so you want to have fuck lunch? And he's like, what? And she's like, lunch? And he's like, what? <laughs> I don't know. And he gets all scared. So this is his moment of like, do I or don't I, I guess. Oh, yes. She just had to have him. Why does she like him? Sorry, I don't right. get it. What, what did he do? I also feel the same way. I, I don't understand why she liked him at all. No sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, speaking as a heterosexual woman, you know, I, I think I'm pretty good at deciphering, like, who's attractive and who's not. And he's not attractive. No. Like, I didn't get it either. It was very, it was like that movie. Has anyone watched You People on Netflix and, like, trying to believe, like, Lauren London would be attracted to Jonah Hill? <laughs> like, for even a yes. second? Like, mm -hmm. mm, yeah, no. kind of like his real girlfriend or ex. Ooh, now. oh, <laughs> boy. Ooh, burr. <laughs> <laughs> So now we cut to Brie and Ansel on their lunch. And speaking of how attractive she finds him, this is the worst acting that this actress who plays Brie does. <sighs> she says, I think you're rather sexy yourself. But she says it like she's doing it at gunpoint. Oh, it's she's like, I find you. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> attractive. I had to like T. I know he doesn't remember this. Like I took T is hilarious, but like I was taking notes of what he was saying while we were watching it. And at one point, he was like, "This would be worth watching if it were porn." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wrote that at one point. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, I was rooting for Lauren and Misty to get into a porn couple scenario. Ooh. I thought that, like of all the people in the movie. Those two getting together would have made sense to me. They're the most Absolutely. suited personality -wise. Yeah, they're like best friends. They like playing yeah. chess together. They Wrong. support each other. Yeah, she's like, yeah, that's not how that works, but I'm going to let you do it anyway because I love you, babe. Right. <laughs> there you go. So now we get a quick basketball montage and Ansel is going to talk to his 
basketball and we'll later learn also co-worker friends okay. about his situation with Lauren. I put them down as perfectly diverse basketball buddies. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they were like a brochure for basketball college. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it, but, now, <laughs> I will point out that during the basketball montage, the two white friends, they don't actually do any of the basketball. They things. don't. No. They're just on the bleachers later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. My favorite part, though, is they do a basketball montage that started outside at a park and then it ends up inside <laughs> at a gym, but it's the same people, mm -hmm. which is insane. All they had to do is show them inside the gym only because that's where the scene happens. They're just establishing it. The scene starts with them being like, hey, uh, it was a weird day of basketball for us outdoors. <laughs> indoors." <laughs> anyway, let's talk now. Yeah, about our relationships. I think what happened is they were, you know, they're in California. They're in L.A., right? Maybe he was trying to play with that Celtics jersey on <laughs> and they were driven in, indoors Thank you. by Thank the you. rightfully outraged Laker fans. This is right. This is Los Angeles. And mm -hmm. it's all we see is a Celtics jersey and a Sixers jersey. No Lakers jersey. Fuck off. Absolutely not. <laughs> and I don't want to be too broad. And T can back me up here. Like, it doesn't take much to get beaten up for wearing the wrong thing. <laughs> Like, oh, absolutely. Just generally. I don't know. So they, they talk a bit about Lauren's no sex rule and that he's he's being tempted by Brie and, and they talk about Brie. And one of the guys and, and I want you two to really be my guide here because this, these aren't terms I'm familiar with. Maybe they're valid. Maybe they're not. Does one often talk about women in terms of their platuka and bladuka? I've never heard that before <laughs> this movie. Never heard that. I feel like that is fake slain that Daryl taught Michael. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. that's what that is. <laughs> like, I don't, I wouldn't use that unless, no. like, yeah, no, don't do it. <laughs> it does not seem like a good idea. That ain't clear. And there's just one other moment in this scene that I have to point out, which is that the white actor, they gave him one line where he says, like, that's not the thing to do brother. Oof. And they very clearly wanted him to say brother in a slang way. And this white actor was like not doing it. <laughs> nope. So he says it like Hulk Hogan. He's like, I'll tell you what, brother, you're going to want to not cheat on your lady friend. I'm out of the movie. Don't beat me up. Goodbye. <laughs> so post locker room talk, it's time for Ansel. And I call him Platuka for the rest of the movie. Okay. I don't know what his actual name is, but it's time for Ansel and Platuka to have a heart to heart. I think it's Spencer. Yeah, that sounds right. Oh, is that knockoff Jason? Uh, knockoff Jason Mitchell. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, either way, he suggests not cheating on his fiance, and uh, that seems to be the plan going forward. Can I say, in real life, like with real men like this, they would have just been having a conversation about where you can hide condoms. <laughs> yeah. Like I used to work in a barber shop. Like that's pretty much what the conversations are like. Oh, the conversation earlier was terrible. They were just like, oh, so you're not going to have sex with Brie because you're uh, getting married? You need to set me up with Brie. And then another one's like, no, set me up with Brie. Like, as if she was a stock tip mm -hmm. in the, uh, instead of a human <laughs> being. <laughs> yeah, pass her this way. They do that for a while. But I did enjoy that Spencer's advice was just like, uh, here's the plan. Don't cheat. <laughs> yep. Okay. Mm. So I, I just won't then. And then that's solved. Okay. It's like just saying no. Exactly. Real simple. Yeah, it works great. Well, now that we've met the Yoda character, I think we all get a quick break. And then we'll be back for act two of He Who Finds a Wife. Knock, knock, handsome. Well, hello there, babe. To what do I owe the pleasure? <laughs> I think you know exactly what you owe the pleasure to, mister. We discussed that this morning. <laughs> <laughs> sure did, right? <laughs> right? Hi. Oh, right. Uh, Denise, this is my cubicle mate, Kyle. Kyle, Denise, my Hi. sweet, sweet sugar. Well, if I'm so sweet, why not have another taste? Don't mind if I do. Do you guys want to maybe take it to lunch or something? Nope. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Besides, someone already ate this morning. <laughs> I sure did. Right. Got it. Um, Sex. Cunnilingus. It's just that 
I'm yeah, oral, trying to oral. work here. Hey, Kyle, do you have the... Oh, um, hello. Hi, I'm Denise. Stephanie, uh, sorry, who are you, Denise? Oh, I'm Kevin's fiance. Oh, congratulations. Why are your ankles around his neck? You know how it is. <laughs> yeah, we do. No, we do not. Anyway, Kyle, do you have the Vincent report? Snookums. Whookums. Uh, yeah. Mwah. Just, mwah. you know, mm. well, I'll email mwah. it to you. Welcome, Snookums. Welcomes. I hope you cheat on each other and break up. Yeah, me too. Definitely what's going to happen. I mean, tell me that doesn't taste just like taco meat. This is a carrot. A carrot with spices, Cat. A carrot with spices. Hey, all What you doing? Eli was just showing us his vegan tacos. Yeah, how do you deal with it? Yeah, good question. I have HelloFresh. What? HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. A meal kit? Don't those get kind of samey? Not at all with HelloFresh. HelloFresh keeps your taste buds on their toes with 40 chef-crafted recipes to select from every week. From family-friendly to fit and wholesome, you'll always find new and exciting recipes to try and love. I don't know, Heath. I don't always have time to cook. Well, with HelloFresh, all you need is 15 minutes and you'll be enjoying a tasty, satisfying meal made in your own kitchen. Just look for their quick and easy dinner options, plus quick breakfasts and lunches, too. It's true. HelloFresh sent us a box to try when they became a sponsor, and I love their quick and easy dinner options for when Anna and I don't have the time to do all the prep for a regular meal. That's why I, Eli Bosnick, personally endorse HelloFresh. That's not saying much, Mr. Carrot. Carrot tacos, cat. Carrot tacos. All right. <laughs> all right, Heath. We're sold. Where do I sign up? Just go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 awful and use the code 50 awful for 50% off plus free shipping. So we go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 awful and use code 50 awful for 50% off plus free shipping? That's exactly right. All right. Thanks, Heath. Um, so long, carrot tacos. I mean, you didn't even get to try them with the cheese. Eli, that's shredded carrot. Shredded carrot cheese tea. Shredded carrot cheese. And we're back. And we're going to fire up act two with about, I'm going to say, 45 minutes of Ansel driving through Los Angeles in real life to like get to the movie <laughs> and then eventually do the movie. I don't know why they felt the need to make it so long. Yeah, they were definitely reaching for it because this movie is like 101 minutes. They were definitely reaching for that like $45 from Tubi as opposed to 20 you get if it's oh. only only 90. <laughs> yeah. But this is where we're going to meet my second favorite character of the movie. I'm talking, of course, Soda can. about Ansel's Winnie the Pooh dressed drunk dad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, Winnie the Pooh? He had pants. No, he's dressed like... Didn't we he have pants? If you look at him, he's got the gray hat with the little ears. He's got a gray sweater on. He's like a <laughs> he's like a dark universe Winnie the Pooh. He definitely has the back hair. Yep. Interesting. I did, yeah. not, I did not catch the Winnie the Pooh vibes from this guy at all. I mean, he liked liquor the way Winnie the Pooh likes honey. Exactly. Oh, yeah, there's a I lot see. going on I there. See. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to yes and that. Okay. Thank you, Kat. <laughs> Need. A little support. A little support. Appreciate it. But yeah, Ansel comes into the house, which is apparently where his dad lives, and he is asleep and or passed out in the bathtub? I found Ansel weirdly judgy in this moment because he comes in and like, yes, okay, <laughs> dad is hanging out in the bathtub. Not great. Not great. But he's like, hey, why are there transients in your living room? And I was like, okay, you don't know about the timing for those people. You don't know if they're transient <laughs> or they just live there or they're popping in regular just for the evening. You have no idea. <laughs> Can we talk about a couple of things that dad says here from inside the bathtub? Please. So first of all, I think he says something along the lines of the source of my sanity. Like the only thing keeping me sane <laughs> is that your mom, Myrtle, is dead. What? <laughs> What a weird thing to say to your son. What did he? I don't even know what they thought they meant by that. Well, it's actually not even his mom. It was just like the woman who raised him because when he gets offended at that, he's like, ah, she wasn't even your mom. 
It's just That's right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, move, I'm going to move right past that one. Okay. Then, then dad says, hey, did I tell you about my trip to Africa? <laughs> and I was like, all right, man, name a country probably, right? Like, or what, you went to probably one or more countries in that giant continent. He went to the whole thing. He went to all of okay. Africa. He went to the whole of Africa <laughs> and he tells the story that he fucked a bunch there and everybody's poly in Africa. Didn't know that. Didn't know that. But he enjoyed the polyamory of Africa. Yeah. They didn't mind sharing. Yes. They, I think is what he, the quote is. Yeah, right. They didn't mind sharing. <laughs> That's the first thing I think of <laughs> when I think of that portion of the earth. Yeah. But I think the message the film is trying to say is only crazy drunks like polyamory. Mm. Okay. I mean, she's got you there. <laughs> don't do that. I see, I see what's happening. I see what was happening there. I don't like it. I will say... That this movie throughout, I think it's accidentally making great points that polyamory is great and probably traditional marriage is stupid. Monogamy, definitely not a great idea because it ruins things for a lot of people. Definitely don't be Christian because that's going to fuck everything up. Like they accidentally just give you a great, great path for relationships that is the opposite of what they're trying to say. Yeah, the DVD of this actually comes with a copy of The Ethical Slut. I don't know if you knew that's that. A, oh, there you go. that's smart. Yeah. That's smart. Mm -hmm. And speaking of ethical sluts, the next day Ansel is at work doing his best to avoid Brie. I'm not sure if this was supposed to be comedy, this montage, but it definitely made me laugh. I think they were trying to be like sexy, like in Boomerang. Like Ooh. when I think that's okay. what they were going for, because <laughs> I mean, I was skipping ahead a little bit. Like when they do the sex scene, like I am very familiar with that sex scene. And I was like, I feel like they're kind of like, it's a bit of an homage. So, sure. yeah. You think the sex scene was an homage to Boomerang, like Eddie Murphy? Yeah, the, when he has the sex scene with Robin Givens for the first time. Interesting. Uh, okay. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm just throwing that out there. Kat, I got to tell you, I did not want to contradict you. The only Boomerang I am familiar with is the TV channel that shows old Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Oh, I used so to I was love like, Boomerang. <laughs> yes, I was no. like, just... <laughs> Does the Yogi Bear fuck? Does he, I feel like Yogi Bear might I have probably that little bear. I probably should jump in and ask a At question one. right now because it'll go badly. I don't want to know. <laughs> that was a different website. So yeah, montage or no, late that night, the phone rings and it's Misty, the hero of the film. And she's letting us know that Jeffrey hit Misty. Not Je it's Lorenzo. Oh, Lorenzo. That's right. Lorenzo. How dare you say that about Jeffrey. Jeffrey? He got hit. Yeah, Jeffrey's the one taking the hits, not giving them out. <laughs> Lorenzo hit Misty. I just wrote in my notes, I will avenge you, Misty. How dare he? You should. And then Ansel comes home, right? And Lauren is like, can you believe that Lorenzo hit Misty? And his answer is, and I quote, I would never hit a woman, especially not one as sweet as you. Aww. Yikes. That that feels like maybe you would hit a woman. <laughs> yup. She's being a all mouthy and being a bitch about it. Yeah. <laughs> like you got me again. Like Sean Connery, you gotta smack her around a little. Exactly. Yeah. He actually names like several positive qualities that she has that preclude him from being violent with her. Mm, and yes. she's like, thank you for saying that. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. It felt a little bit like a list of conditions, but you yeah. know, you know, <laughs> he did open with I'll never hit a woman. And now it's time for the pastor's sermon. The, the, the sermon that lands like a wet fart in the middle of this movie. And it was really interesting to watch this because the pastor very much has the rhythms of a charismatic pastor who's like going to really get you psyched up with his amazing speech. But he just. He doesn't have the content. So he's like, when a man has a wife, they're keep going, Eli. Keep going. Married keep going. to each other. Keep going. And then it's they also good. Good. Amen, amen. <laughs> a wife will rescue you from all of Spider-Man's villains. And you're like, I don't think this guy planned this super well. No. To be clear, it's it's something in the Bible, right? It's the the title of the movie is in the Bible. Yes. yes, it's Proverbs. It's yeah. in Pro okay, it's in Proverbs. He who finds Proverbs a wife. Proverbs 1822. It's something good. And so the speech is like, when you find a wife, it's like buying something at the store, but a good thing at the store. Like, that's the point of this sermon. And then they show us the people in the church, and there's women in the, in the pews being like, 
I do aspire to be a desirable retail item. Amen. <laughs> it's so weird. It was very reminiscent of the Barbie movie where it's like, yes, I like being a helpful decoration. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is the ticket. Like exactly. a spa for my brain. Honestly, if he had started to sing, I want to push you around, it still would have been better than the sermon. What? I would have been down for it. To be fair, I feel like the Barbie movie was definitely more leaning towards, we were talking about this the other day, Kat, the emasculation and remasculation of men. That's what I took Ooh. from it. Ken was fab fabulous. I like that. It's a treatise on modern feminism for sure. I, 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 I thought I, it was fantastic. They already made a billion dollars. So, you know, go woke and opposite of broke is working. Right. So love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Made Tucker Carlson sad. All the points. Oh, good. And it made me super gay. Yeah. Nice. I'm super gay now. Way ahead. Of Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, by day, by night, oh. I am a homo thug. Homo thug. There yeah. you go. That's there you go. My superhero names. <laughs> That's thugnificent. Thugnificent. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh. So now we're going to have an, a completely useless scene between Lauren and Jeff. Remember Jeff, the ex with the giant bruise on his head? It's yeah. still there. And they're going to have the exact same conversation they had in her car, but in her office. Yeah, because he's just there. Yeah, he just shows up. Offices need to stop letting people just show <laughs> up. It keeps happening, right? Now, I will admit, I was a little distracted in this scene. And I want to know if anyone noticed it but me. Lauren appears to have a painting of a ghost carrying a dead Native American stereotype on her wall. And so whatever was happening in the scene, <laughs> okay. I was very confused by that uh, image. I think, well, I think that was Jesus, wasn't it? Yes, I think it was Jesus carrying somebody like through the... Like the Red Sea, like maybe it was Moses part of the Red Sea and he's carrying somebody. I thought it was just a black guy. I don't think it was just a black. I oh, look, wasn't. I can't remember because I I knew who was going to be on this episode. I was very careful <laughs> <laughs> to, <laughs> to make sure <laughs> about what stereotypes I, I was seeing and or I, not seeing. I'll have to look it back up, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I deleted a bunch of all of a sudden. Notice. Eli's like, I didn't see the race of the person. That I didn't. <laughs> I actually don't see. Color. I don't even. <laughs> it doesn't even. I can't. It's impossible I for me. Even know. You know what? It, it's the internet delay. What did you guys oh. hear? I I actually right. didn't say anything. That was, T I don't know if you guys know, T is the one who pointed that out. He's, I but his internet. like, it was definitely someone, can we say BIPOC? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Boom. Nailed there it. There we go. And mm -hmm. so. My I wife's feel, BIPOC. Of course. I, my wife is BIPOC. Oh, don't try to fix it now. <laughs> <laughs> Some of my best friends are you. You guys are gonna, gonna, Oh my God, this movie, right? Yes, the movie. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> we need you to do that a lot on other episodes okay. too. Yep. Oh exactly. my God, this movie, right? Where's Noah? It's <laughs> <laughs> the questions we've been asking too. All right, so now we we get a smooth R&B transition over to Ansel's office where his... Oh, wait, no. I can't, I'm sorry, Eli. I'm sorry to interrupt. But like, no, we missed the knee, the knee grab. Like, he grabs her yes, knee. Yes, gross. He does like, grab her knee. Weird. I put that under... I put an explanation next to that one because... And then yells, why not? Yes. <laughs> like, it's getting weird. Insane. He, say, he grabs her <laughs> knee and he says, I want you back. And she very clearly, she's like, no. No. And he's, he says, why not? Like he wants like an exit interview from three years ago. <laughs> right. She starts answering with answers. And I was like, you don't need to answer it. You just, you press the security button now. And that is the answer. And he is escorted from the building. I feel like my quote was no Drake ass ninja. Like, that was like the vibes. And she says, you need to leave. And he looks at her and goes, you know my number. And I was like, really not getting it. Really not picking up. Yeah. Things. She's laying down, man. He, she says you need to leave. And there's a long pause where like they just stare at each other and he <laughs> stares back and she's like, oh, we're doing this. And then finally she's like, I'm doing a reverse chair spin. Like, you know, the evil <laughs> chair spin when you enter a room. I'm doing the opposite. <laughs> you need to leave. Now. <laughs> he finally leaves. It was a romantic tension. Yeah. Like, yes, is that that's what it is. That, okay, the chemistry, you know, the tension, it's built. It is built. Not Good enough point. chair spins. That's what I always call assault. Sexual tension. <laughs> sexual tension. Love how those yeah. are similar and the more, the more tension. Like yeah. <laughs> Exactly. What's more tense than a horror movie? 
Now we're going to cut to that night. And Very Lauren smooth. is setting out candles for a romantic evening of not sex. Not sex. Yes. This pissed me off. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Because here's the thing. I get it. You're not entitled to sex. But I feel like if someone lights candles and you come home expecting sex, they can't then be like, I don't know why you expected sex. I would like to distance myself from, I think, what Eli just said. Now, you, know what I, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to be clear, <laughs> to be, like you're not supposed to be judgy about no sex. But no, I do. I do have judgments about exactly how that, uh, why that's happening here. The like, I don't want to have sex today. Yes, you get to not want to have sex this today. No matter who you are, you. whenever you want, any day. But if your reason is we're timeouting sex because of the pastor told me to, not great. Not great. I 100% back that. No one is entitled to sex, but I also feel like, I mean, come on. You're doing all of these things that traditionally lead up to sex. We at least have to have a conversation. Right. That just we're not doing it. It doesn't work. I'm going to pipe in as the only woman here and a former member of a celibacy group called A Promise to Keep. Amazing. And pretty much. Wait, you, you did A Promise to Keep? Yeah. How have we never talked about this? You are a fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> well, back to my original point. And you act, no, you actually did it and you didn't have sex, didn't you? Because everybody yeah, I, I knew, the they, only they, virgin they, in the group. Yes. You, everybody <laughs> I knew only did it to uh for their college application. Yeah, they didn't get. Yeah, they were actually you get, paid, having, you get <laughs> paid for it too. You get money. You get money. Yeah, you get to paid. not fuck. <laughs> Keith. Okay, so you should be the president. That's let's amazing. back it up, guys. Let's back it up. Me and T both went to the same Catholic high school at different times. I'm older. Okay, and so there was a a group called it was a celibacy group called a promise to keep. And it was a purity thing where you go, our job was to go to different middle schools and elementary schools and teach them about saving it for Jesus. Wow. But of course, no one was doing it except me. As T pointed out, I'm a loser. <laughs> so yeah, I don't want to get into that because that's its own thing. But I feel it ties into this because the purity thing of like doing it before marriage makes you a whore. Obviously, yes. Mm -hmm. And also masturbation, because I feel like in somebody's notes, it was kind of like, well, can these people jack off? That was my question throughout the okay. whole film. <laughs> okay. No, no. Jacking off is pretty much gay because you are you have your hand on a man's dick. So <laughs> you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's never been a problem for me on the other okay. end of the spectrum. Well, what, what, if I, what if I'm doing that and I'm not attracted to myself? Then it's fine, right? Ooh. It's still gay. It's just a hate fuck. What if I fight <laughs> myself as hard as I can? <laughs> <laughs> what if my wife is having gay thoughts? You're just describing hotter and hotter sex. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you. <laughs> so that's it. all that's happening there. So yeah, no, you can't have, you can't masturbate. I think I put in my notes, very similar to Mormons, masturbation makes God sad face. Oh. Yeah. Anyways, she welcomes him home to a candlelit night of cuddles. Mm-hmm. And so now we cut over to Brian Ansel working on the campaign for the job thing. It's the same tension filled <laughs> small talk. <laughs> but just as they're business businessing, Lauren calls to tell Ansel that she's going to visit her mom for a few days. And also she filled her bedroom drawer with condoms and lube <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> hey, those candles are still there. <laughs> she, I really, she might as well leave a trail of cookie crisp up to <laughs> Bree's vagina at this point in the film. <laughs> Which means it's time for the sex scene. And yes, we get a sex scene in this movie. You guys are welcome. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> this was a beautifully, beautifully chosen movie for this reason. Kat is the one who picked out this film. I love that because this is a Christian movie, like she takes off her, Brie takes off her dress and she's basically wearing a one piece bathing suit, right? I, it is actually like a negligee of some kind, but this is a Christian movie. There was no way they were going to show stomach. So she just takes off her dress and she's wearing almost exactly the same amount of clothing as her dress. <laughs> <laughs> the navel is especially sinful. Yes, exactly. Is it? They know. Mm, okay. Yeah. Also, one other thing I have to point out about this sex scene, because it was just too funny to me. The people who made this movie don't realize that sex scenes in movies are edited. So one of the things that we get to watch the entirety of is her struggling with her high-heeled shoes. 
right? She's trying to do the like kiss and delicately remove my shit. I, f- I, I can't do it. It's got a buckle. So she just, she's like, stop cussing me for a second. Click, click, click. All right, now there you go. <laughs> Those shoes weren't made for walking anyway. Mm-hmm. Leave them on. Ex- thank you, Kat. Excellent point. Excellent point. Kat, you're making great points here. You're the permanent replacement for Noah. Uh-huh. He can Thank stay you. in Denver. No. Noah never met, backed me up about shoes during sex. No. <laughs> <laughs> so now we join them post-coitus. And now that Ansel has come, he's mad that he has had sex with Bree. It's so stupid. She says to him, you don't regret it, do you? And I'm like, his dick is still sticky. It is way <laughs> too soon <laughs> for him to be regretting this. But he... But he says no, right? Yeah. But he like he his all of his body language is like, no, he totally regrets this, but he just needed to you know, he just needed to meet that nettle meter quota. Yeah. yeah. Right? Well, so <laughs> yeah. Wow, like, don't bring up the nettle meter again. Not again. I gave that to you guys as a gift. <laughs> I thought that was useful. <laughs> like he's yeah, he's definitely looking mad about what's just happened. He looks like the before guy from a Viagra commercial for a second when they cut <laughs> to the post sex. And I was like, this is so sad. Like marriage turns sex with this beautiful woman into a sad thing for everybody. And he's all in a snit now. Not sad enough to kick her out, though. Well, mm-hmm. good point. Yeah. She's like, Are you visibly regretting that amazing thing we just did? And he's like, Yeah, no. no. Yeah. We're doing round two either way, which, okay. Right. <laughs> right. At that point, I think that's just good math. Like, yeah. yes, it's, you're already, the negative already happened, so. I wrote my notes, in for a penny, in for a pounding, if you know what I'm saying. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they fuck again, and then we get this absolutely insane scene. It's supposed to be the guilty scene. Lauren calls, and she's checking on him, and he's guilty. But Brie is doing the most hilariously loud things in the background. She's just fucking making juice with a juicer, hand grinding coffee, milking a cow she brought in from outside. (laughs) She's doing a morning show. She's got a soundboard. (laughs) She's giving them like, what eyes? Like, what? It's like, you know what you're doing. Yeah, she was way too comfortable. She was way too comfortable. Like, she was not playing her role at all. (laughs) She's making the, is that my daughter in there noise? That's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Look, it, you don't get you don't get to have sex outside of your marriage and then demand silence from your mistress, right? I guess Ansel does. <laughs> All right. Well. <laughs> Again, the question is, what do they see in this this guy? I don't get it. Like he it's not even is it even established that he's like super successful at his no. job? Because I feel like he's just like mid level manager. Yeah, he's like middle manager. It's established that he's not. Yeah, he's assistant to the director <laughs> of central affairs. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And I'm pretty sure his car was basic. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's trying to solve the mystery of how Ansel has two people fuck him in this film. Does not make sense. No. All right. Well, two adults had some delightful consensual sex together. So that's going to be a big problem. We're going to need a quick break. (laughs) But first, let me give act three the hard sell. Will Ansel and Lauren become better people? Will the movie remember what happened to Misty and address it in any way whatsoever? Will marriage be the right move? For any person in the entire movie, find out that (laughs) no to all of that. When we return for the conclusory conclusion of He Who Finds a Wife. Guys, thanks for meeting me. No problem, man. Yeah, whatever you need. So Lauren has this thing where we're not having sex till the wedding, you know, because of religion. Oh, wow. That's really messed up. Yeah, that seems like a really unhealthy boundary to draw. Yeah, tell me about it. So I get to cheat on her, right? Uh, sorry, what? Well, there's this girl, Bree, at work, and I feel like I could probably have sex with her, but I wanted to make sure that it was dude, like... No, mm, just... Nope. No, dude, no, 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 no. Just because Lauren is setting unhealthy boundaries doesn't mean you get to cheat on her. Okay, but I want to have sex and Lauren won't let me. Right, yeah, so you have a conversation about those boundaries with... Lauren. Oh, I get her permission to cheat on her. Uh, I love that, but I don't no, think she's going to go no, no, for no, it. No, stop filling in cheating on her. Just talk to your fiance. Yeah, have a conversation. Oh, uh, okay. I got it. So we talk about how unhealthy it is to set unhealthy and arbitrary limits on our sex life. Right, exactly. And then I cheat on her as punishment. There it is. Okay, I'm done. 
This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hi, podcast listener. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And we're Kat and T from the Bible Breakdown Podcast. You know, we get asked quite a bit how we make podcasting partnerships work. What about you guys? Oh, yeah. Communication is important. And honesty. And of course, so is midnight boxing. Sorry, midnight boxing? Yeah. Yeah. Once a month, our company meets up at midnight and we just go at it. You know, it really blows off the steam. You box each other. I mean, not with like rules, but yeah, yeah. it's mostly just punching. Mm -hmm. You don't like keep score. Right. So have you guys considered therapy? (laughs) Therapy. Now you're talking crazy. Come on. I'm not. Whether you're dealing with decisions around your career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you to stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Okay, that does sound a little better than midnight boxing, but I don't know where to find a therapist, Kat. That seems like a whole thing. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. All right, you know what? I'm in. Where do we sign up? Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Awful Today to get 10% off your first month. That's Help, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Awful. Nice. All right. Goodbye, Midnight Boxing. Yeah, I'm going to go take these phone books out of my shirt. Phone books? For padding. Oh, for padding. Right. Yeah. Uh. And we're back. And once again, we're going to start the new act with a Very long establishing shot, an establishing montage, I would say, of Los Angeles where (laughs) the movie is like you could just start a scene. We'll piece it together that the people came to the scene somehow. But no, they show us this whole thing. And then eventually we're at Ansel's cubicle and Lauren shows up to surprise him after her weekend away. Right. For her usual dose of lap sitting and open mouth kisses. (laughs) But he is riddled with guilt, so he doesn't want to smooch her in the middle of this open office plan. That's weird, too. I always feel like people, like, a lot of times are in a better mood when they're getting the sex they want. Like, it's weird that you're, like, in a worse (laughs) mood after having, like, what looked like busted several nuts over the weekend. Like, you should be really, really relaxed. At least two that we saw. I feel like it was way more. I feel like it was more than two. But he did, he's not getting sex from the woman he wants. Oh, that's beautiful. To have sex with. So he's still pissed. Say that. Yeah. <laughs> it's never enough. And Lauren is immediately suspicious. Like, like she read the script for the movie and knows he boned that lady in her bathing suit. Like, that's how <laughs> instantly she is sure that he's been cheating on her. She's right. I mean, she is right. To be fair to her, she is correct. <laughs> So later that day, Ansel comes home to Lauren, who's unloading the laundry. He doesn't see Lauren when he walks in. He like calls for her, but she's giving him the silent treatment. And he doesn't see Lauren. So she just sort of stands huffily behind him like the Babadook. It's very disconcerting. (laughs) It has real horror movie vibes this moment. I actually have a critique with this moment because, okay, so the light is on behind him. I don't know. Maybe this is just like, I'm a black guy. So maybe this is just like trauma of living in America. But like... You know, you always play your corners, man. When you walk into a room, like, you're looking around. And, like, the light is clearly on. He's calling her. So I have no idea how he did not look that way. But yeah, You do that whatever. little, like, head duck thing, like a police procedural, where you just pop your head and pop it out real yeah. quick. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Throw a smoke bomb into every room before you get in there. Okay. One other thing about the, the moment when he walks in. So that's crazy, yes, that he doesn't see her, because that's ridiculous. She's right there. And then he goes into the kitchen... And, you know, it's like the end of the day at work. So he's going to kick back with a a nice three ounce pour of orange juice into a footed mug for a cappuccino, which is (laughs) so weird for so many reasons. What was happening? I guarantee you this was like their third tank. And they were like, hey, Ansel, you're wasting the orange juice. Okay, you need to be way less liberal with the orange juice you pour yourself. And this is the take they went with. Oh, you think they like took away his pint glass and they were like, you get a footed mug. Yeah, he definitely over poured in the first two takes. 
I feel like this actor, I don't know where he's from. Usually you can tell where people are from because he's not giving L.A. vibes. Like black guys from L.A. have a certain way about them. Oh, mm-hmm. He's a transplant for sure. Yeah. Like for one, he doesn't wear undershirts. That's weird. Like you, whenever you see him and he has a dress shirt on, he's never wearing an undershirt. Like black guys don't really do that. And then like he doesn't have a mustache. Like he has no facial hair. Oh, you think he's from overseas? Hmm. Yeah. Like I don't, cause I can't place this dude. Oh, so he's like, he's like Christian Idris Elba. Ooh. Maybe. Let's just say right now, if this part had been played by Idris Elba, the entire plot of the the film would have made sense. It makes so much (laughs) sense now. Yeah, of course. Well, then you just get obsessed. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, but that one had lighting. It was so bizarre. Like, yeah, he's he's just an enigma. None of his choices make sense. So, yeah, sure. He's taking a cappuccino cup, putting orange juice in it. Why not? Sure. (laughs) Maybe that's how they do it wherever he's from. (laughs) Exactly. Wherever that is. This is also where Lauren asks him, why did he change the sheets? And he says... I spilled some ice cream on him. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, ooh, Brie, you're going to want to get that checked out. Monostat one, girl. Monostat oh, one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it was just on her back. Yeah. Also, oh, like, yeah. I said most of the ice cream was on her back, but a little always gets on the sheets. Even you know how it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Things migrate. So, yeah, she's suspicious. Later that night, they're cuddling, watching TV. When the world's loudest cell phone goes off. <laughs> But it's Bree, and this is this is the worst hiding an affair ever. He's like, oh, what's that? Give me one second. Then he like goes and hides in the corner and starts whispering into his phone. <laughs> Who besides the kidnappers and a woman he was having an affair with could he possibly have been talking to in that tone of voice? Spencer. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the lie he makes up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he's like Spencer. a Patuka guy. It's always, it's always Spencer. Sometimes I have to whisper lovingly to Spencer, but assure him that I still care about him and want to see him again soon. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, those are Spencer's condoms. <laughs> those are Spencer's. Sorry. I, that's how most people, like, that's how I found a lot of partners cheating. It's like, why are there all these condoms here? Yep. Like, we're, in, yeah. And it's like, oh, those are Tony's condoms. It's like, okay. So how long have you and Tony been fucking? Your friend brought over a bunch of condoms. He, we should do that as a bonding activity. Just like share condoms. Sure. No, nah, he just le- he left him. He left them in the car or wherever we at. And, sure. you know, I, I just mean to give them back to him. We all know when you're riding with your bro and you take out your condoms to show him your favorite ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's be real. I don't think our protagonist is using condoms on Mm-mm. either of his pieces. No, he doesn't seem like that kind of guy either. He's not no. giving responsibility. No, that, that's murder. Technically, it is. <laughs> this is a man who puts underwear over a sticky penis and we all know oh. it. there's no, not even a courtesy washcloth in this man's oh. bedroom. And the sink was right there. You guys are downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. You got the fridge with the water dispenser if you need to. You yeah. can just do it like that. Spray down. Yeah. So he storms out of the house in a huff. She also storms out of the house in a huff. It feels like one of them would stay, but they apparently they both storm out of the house in a huff. Now we're going to get the scene that I find incredibly confusing, okay? Which is while he goes and breaks up with Brie, which he does, to be fair, now Lauren will go meet up with Jeff, the guy who chased her out of the carpet store Mm -hmm. and then came to her office and grabbed her. She meets up with Jeff in an abandoned car and kisses him. Yep, they make out. Okay, so... She's definitely not wife material. Like if, it, if that's all, it t- she doesn't, she doesn't even have she doesn't even have a confirmation that he actually cheated yet, and yes. she just ran. Like, what if he really did have an emergency, <laughs> or was just grumpy? Maybe he or just didn't just, feel like yeah. getting to third base at the office that day, or yeah. maybe he's irritated that you keep like not having sex with him. And he's like, it's easier for me to not have sex with you if you're not like lounging around like in, you know, cuddling with him on the couch (laughs) um, loungewear. Yeah, I'm rooting for nobody in the movie except Misty at this point. No, nobody except for Misty, who happy to say, spoiler alert, turns out just great. Yeah. But like, seriously, because what I find so interesting about this is this entire movie is about Ansel's infidelity. And this movie does not even acknowledge Lauren's infidelity for the rest of the film. I thought maybe Lauren, the actress, just kissed Jeff, the actor, for giving him that giant bruise in his head, and they kept the footage because they forgot to turn the camera off. It was crazy. 
but yeah, apparently that was like a goodbye makeout session. Like she wanted to make out with Jeff so that Jeff, who again has spent the entire movie telling her to get back with him, can now be like, you know, you really shouldn't jump to conclusions. Just be honest and communicate. And she's like, you know, Jeff, now that I've tasted your tongue, that's a really great <laughs> idea. I'm going to head back and really try and communicate with my fiance. <laughs> well, also, doesn't Jeff admit at this part that he broke up with his wife? Yeah. Too? Yeah, she asked. Isn't that at this part? So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so he loses his wife chasing random Lauren because that's he, he says like, yeah, she left me after that incident or something. And I'm just like, this guy, maybe, maybe he took that as a moment where he needed to get his shit together. Maybe <laughs> okay. I, that would be great. So the next day at church, there, Ansel and Lauren are actively giving their <laughs> each other the silent treatment. When the pastor comes in and is like, so how are you guys doing? Awesome. I, I feel like if someone's notes at some point, like the beginning was like, this is no one. No one in this movie should be getting married. Everyone and, and should also be getting divorced. Like divorce is great. Yes. And I, I put in my notes, I've been divorced twice. I love giving up. It's the best, <laughs> best decisions you ever made. Right. Like both yes. times you were like, oh, this is fucking great. So smart. Right. Yes. The old lawyer joke. Like, why is divorce so expensive? Because it's worth, it's worth it. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, or just don't get married in the first fucking place. I mean, I yeah, that's, exactly. That's that is even cheaper. Even Look cheaper. at this. See, Heath, we've turned tea into polyamorous. You've turned cat oh, pro I was divorce. That for a while. <laughs> Okay, and I there have we also go. Been Perfect. Pro for quite some time. All right. Well, there <laughs> we Listen, go. The, the universe is pro. All these is the logic. We're just talking logic now. <laughs> no, let's yeah. just do Eli's thing where Heath is our white savior. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Heath, you want to say you're welcome to our new best friends? <laughs> it's a trap. Don't do. Why would you pause like you were going to do it? You're the one who should have been on the wall in Lauren's office. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Me and Rudyard Kipling love it. We let's get back to this movie. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> so Thank they you. they they managed to not fight for I'm gonna say 10 seconds and then they burst into a big screamy yelling at each other fight. And then of course there's the big dramatic moment of this scene where she says, Who are you accountable to? And he's supposed to say a two thousand year old dead Palestinian rabbi, but he doesn't, so she walks out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. He says myself. Well, I feel like he could have saved himself if, yeah, he says myself. I feel like he could have saved himself, though, by just saying you to his wife or his fiance. But, ooh, that would have been good. Okay. He's just, he's, you know, again, I don't know why they like this guy. Well, now she doesn't. Deal breaker. Exactly. And I just have to point this out. She storms out. And then we cut to them awkwardly driving home together, which means there is a missed scene where she stormed out and then she was like, well, fuck, fuck. He's my ride, okay. and this is L.A. Okay, I'm just gonna wait. By <laughs> not the getting car. a separate Uber. That's insane. Yeah, I'm not getting an Uber X just to get make a point. No. You can drive me home while I give you the silent treatment. So we cut to Ansel at his dad's house. It's time to introduce some more plot because there are a full three and a half minutes left in this movie. This time they actually bothered to put some trash around this old lady's house that Cat said they borrowed. <laughs> But he makes his way through. Dad is still dressed like Winnie the Pooh, but oh, he's overdosed on two Skittles and an M&M. Why, Why does <laughs> it? No movie ever gets drinking right, ever. So it's like the, the drunk person is, they have a bottle that they're drinking out of, like it's Gatorade all way too fast, and they just like collect garbage and pile it everywhere, <laughs> take too many pills. It's so silly. That's not what despair looks like. No, yeah, like, get it right. It's a very different look. Hire a real alcoholic is what I'm saying. You know how like Sia didn't hire somebody with actual autism that part and that was problematic? It's the same thing here. They're not hard to find. Heath, do you want to give out your number and while you're pitching I'm your just business saying. separately? Wait, so you have to hire an alcoholic like a, uh, what do they have? Like um, on-set consultant? Is that yes, what you're intimacy about? coordinator. Yes. A drink to Missy coordinator, if you I will. don't know. I think it's it's historically <laughs> difficult to find unhoused people in L.A. Yeah, th- that's yeah, what they it's say. It's, it's, yeah, it's very I've heard difficult. that. That place is so clean. Yeah. yeah. So he talks to dad about the... He tries to wake his dad up. I thought dad was dead. He's not. He'll be fine later in the movie. <laughs> but, but the point is, while Ansel is out of the house, this is when Lauren discovers... The incredibly large earring of Bree. <laughs> so 
And the, the idea that anybody did not see this up until this point <laughs> is the funniest no, thing in the entire film. Lauren finds this piece of jewelry from Brie like she pressed the hint button on a video game. And it's just like <laughs> spinning hologram right over. It's already enormous and sticking out. It also doesn't make sense where it was. Or maybe, it maybe they got into such serious fucking that they lost this giant earring under the rug next to the fridge. You've never done it under the carpet style? Oh, you gotta try it under the carpet style, Heath. I'm missing out. But even in that, that doesn't make sense because when you're leaving, you're checking like, okay, I got this, I got this. Did she never notice in the, I don't know, it's what been like a week now since she's they've been fucking, like that she didn't have that matching earring? But it is insane that no one saw it before. I imagine it was a pretty large earring. So when she put it's on the bi huge. on the letter, right? It, yeah, it's like, like the jewel like scattered a, a, from a, the mummy. A lobster was under that little rug. It's <laughs> yeah, so <exactly>. big. <laughs> so she finds the earring. She leaves him a dear John letter, and she walks out into the night. That's where our movie started. Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. This is where the movie catches up to itself. Yes. Right, right, this yeah. is where the movie catches up to itself. And just one thing I have to point out, I paused this to make sure this was real because we get two shots of the letter. They wrote a fake letter. And I don't mean they wrote a letter that like the actual person didn't write. That would be crazy because this is a fictional movie. It just says like lorem ipsum on it because they couldn't make up a letter. <laughs> not even lorem ipsum. It's just scribbles that look like writing. Why not just no. write words? <laughs> it's not. Rewatch the movie. Go back. Anyway. I mean, look, again, this movie is in 240p. So maybe I just couldn't <laughs> read it. There. But if you there is a very clear shot of the letter at one point and I paused it and it's just scribbles meant to look like writing on the no paper. No way. I got to be honest with you. I was in and out at this point of the movie. So I'm pretty sure I missed that, but I believe you. Sure. Okay. Did you catch when they cut right from this to what appears to be Ansel having sex with his father? Okay. So here's the thing. <laughs> no. Because that was insane. That was very jarring for me as a viewer. Here's what I think is supposed to be going on. Now that Lauren has left him, he's turned his life around. He's going to clean up his dad's house and give his dad a a shave and a haircut, two bits, yeah, right? It turned right. It turns out he's giving his dad a haircut from behind. But the cut, the the editing to make that happen, oh. I was like, what is happening now? I saw yeah. that in the notes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we just see dad and then we see Ansel behind dad, if you know what I'm thinking. I was about to say, this isn't a that's not a black thing. Fucking your dad? Yeah, that just really <laughs> makes it clear. I would like to know all the things that, that are not a black yeah. thing okay. <laughs> included in that list. Most of the things in this movie, I think the blackest thing was like the excessive amount of hair straightening. Sure. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense. But you guys don't, it, it, uh, T, you've never given your dad a touch up over the sink. <laughs> no, my dad is not going for that. Nor fucked him? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> Not because okay. you're black anyway. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Back to the movie. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to cut to six months later. He's playing basketball with his buddies again. They're talking about girls and he's he's penitent. We can see because they're talking about something entirely different. And apropos of nothing, he's like, I was almost married, but then I cheated. And then she cheated. And then she found an earring. So, wait, what's the movie about now? <laughs> yeah. They forgot for a second. But then one buddy is like, I met the lady at the club the other night. Like, the one. Yeah, and his friends assure him that you don't meet the one at the club. Is the club... Cat, is the club a, a specific place? Or is it Jesus just... Christ. Is it a genre? Even I know the answer. <laughs> oh, well, answer the question then. He don't leave me hanging. The dancer, they went to a dance club and he met a girl. Why would they call it the club then? Because that's one word less than I said. <laughs> no, I was just going to say it's probably the one that they frequent a lot. That's all. Oh, okay. Well, regardless of whether or not you should marry them, um, Ansel now turns around and proclaims, if you really like this girl, the Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing because he's Christian now. <laughs> Is that the lesson of the movie there? Like, yeah, I think so. Because they're know. like, yeah. hey, that, <laughs> that random woman you met at the club who you didn't even name when you told us the story just now, 
marry her because marry that's the her. best thing that can marry ever happen. Marry her because I in cheated on my fiance. And I cheated and it went badly for me. Marry her now. That's <laughs> yeah. what they're saying? That's the movie's lesson? That was terrible. That was a terrible fucking <laughs> lesson. <laughs> right? It's a very weird lesson. But then as he's walking away, because we do need a happy ending, Lauren calls him and then he smiles and gives God a wink because she forgave him, we we guess. Maybe, maybe. We don't know that. Maybe? Because it could be ambiguity. It could be uh, this is their version of the Inception ending. You don't know what's going to happen. Or, or maybe hmm. she's gotten to in a fight with her new boyfriend and her habit is always called the old boyfriend. <laughs> right, when exactly. That she just switches oh, back. Oh, shit. Uh, that is. That's it. That's great. That's perfect. <laughs> just like Boomerang. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So final answer. Moral of the story. Don't get married because that's dumb for most people. I don't know. What do you think? What is the actual moral of the story? I think... The moral of this narrative is you need a man, but be careful because he might hit you. And I am a good thing, but only when a man finds me. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Nailed That's it. What Nailed the it in one. Is quite certain is the moral of the story. That's correct. Great. Nailed it. I did it. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for our review of He Who Finds a Wife. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we found another terrible movie for next week. Eli. What's on deck? What can one man do to fight the international decay of the greatest country the world has ever known? We'll be watching John Schneider's To Die For. <laughs> Ew. All right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Ew, indeed. That is correct. Cat. Ew, indeed. With that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 416 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Cat and T for joining us. And where can everyone hear more from you? So if you guys would like to hear more from us, join us at The Bible Breakdown. We're on all the major streaming podcast streaming services. And I also do another podcast called Fake Ass Book Club with my best friend. And we are basically going to be your black friends who aren't super religious and make you feel weird. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Got it. We have that recorded. <laughs> <laughs> promise accepted <laughs> and of course a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity if you'd like to help support the show you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash god awful that'll get you early access to an ad free version of every episode and if you enjoyed this show be sure to check out our sibling shows The Scathing Atheist Citation Needed Skeptocrat and D&D Minus available in all the podcast places if you have questions comments or cinematic suggestions you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars, while other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Cat, T, and Eli, I'm Heath. Promise you to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House close. Ansel and Lauren get married, but six months after that, Ansel and Lauren get caught in a double catfish on a married people <laughs> dating app. <laughs> And have a good laugh. Well, there you go. Homophobic rapper guy got roasted on Instagram by Lil Nas X, and he's canceled now. Spencer, also known as Baduka, becomes a bottle double for uh, Jason Mitchell after Jason Mitchell's <laughs> career tanked. <laughs> Hester, what's his name? Never did open that folder he held through the entire movie. <laughs> That is correct. <laughs> is correct. No, you did a blowjob mm. noise, Heath. That was definitely a G did a now good that would be bad food noise. You made I it think weird. Everyone would rather have that than vegan tacos. Everyone would rather drink. <laughs> Come is better than vegan tacos. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. Continue your journey at Arizona State University. Choose from more than 300 programs offered online from the nation's most innovative university. Connect with an enrollment advisor to learn about transferring credits and financial aid options. Visit asuonline.asu.edu. Continue your educational journey online at Arizona State University. Recognized as the nation's most innovative university, ASU offers more than 300 programs online, all designed and taught by our award-winning faculty of researchers, scientists, inventors, and authors. Discover what sets us apart. Connect with an ASU enrollment advisor.
and explore a variety of financial aid and scholarship options, as well as how to transfer pre-existing credits. Visit asuonline.asu.edu.